We're looking at Nigeria's foreign policy and what the incoming administration must do differently. I'm joined by a former ambassador to uh, the Republic of Djibouti, and also he was a permanent representative to the African Union and, uh, and United Nations Economic um, Commission. Thank you so much for finding time to join us, Ambassador, on the program tonight. Um, let's begin with your evaluation of Nigeria's foreign policy uh, and how it has evolved over the years. Uh, the position of people differ depending on who you are talking to. Uh, for instance, there are those who question the efficacy of our foreign policy in the wake of the Arab Spring of 2010 and 2011 and that if it was robust and dynamic enough, you know, the resulting weapons proliferation as we know it today would have been largely prevented. What's your thought on how our foreign policy has evolved over the years? Well, thank you very much, uh, Nifemi. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, your intro was very comprehensive. I mean, you, you took uh, the seal out of me, some sort of, uh, in terms of uh, understanding the evolution of our foreign policy. Um, I will start off by saying that uh, what is a foreign policy? Uh, foreign policy is uh, a set of external policy, external objectives and activities that shape the conduct of relations of Nigeria with mm. many, many international states or with foreign foreign countries and also uh, with United Nations uh, and other sub-regional organizations or continental organizations is a set of these objectives and activities that shape the conduct of foreign relations external relations. And so, as we mentioned, is predicated on national interests. Uh -huh. What are national interests? I would say national interest is an aggregation of political, social, economic, particularistic, and group interests, all formed into one, uh, that shape what determines Nigerian foreign policy. Over the years, as you have mentioned, um, there have been quite an evolution since the first Prime Minister made that statement that you referred to at the United Nations, when Nigeria became the 99th country uh, to join the United Nations. And it was well spelled out in terms of uh, uh, non-alignment, uh, protection of uh, uh, peace and security, uh, our en engagement with the United Nations, with some regional organizations, and also maintaining the territorial integrity of Nigeria. But over the years, this has shaped up that uh, we have had a, a, a positive uh, video from mm. post-independence on our Pan-Africanism and uh, you know, engage in the decolonization, uh, shaping, you know, many African countries to become independent, and also our, our anti apartheid struggle. This went on and on, and then we, we have, it has changed. But what has really affected our foreign policy posters is the situation, the economic situation, and of course, uh, the uh, the, the, the domestic policy is, you see, foreign policy is an extension of the domestic policy. Absolutely. At a time that we have very good revenue coming in, at a time that we have peace and relative peace and security, uh, we have maintained a very activist, activist foreign policy in terms of our stance in Africa, our leadership role. See, I must also say that. Um, Foreign policy is based on a tripod, uh -huh. a tripod of geopolitical interests, the military power, and also the economic power. Uh, so I was there when Nigeria played a very prominent role in peace support operations. 
starting from 1916, the Congo, and we have most of our, you know, and that went on and on. But what we have seen over the years is that these are waning because, of course, of our domestic circumstances. Absolutely. But in spite of all, but in spite of all that, mm. uh, there are moves. I mean, there have been there are various heads of states uh, from President Abbasanjo who maintain an activist pan Africanist foreign policy to uh, Yadua to Jonathan, and of course, uh, uh, President Buhari, who uh, since he came in in 2015, has sort of maintained a sort of uh, moderate policy. Well, Let's because... hold your thought, Ambassador Akinsoya, because I'd like us to talk about what happened in the past um, eight years thereabout. Just uh, August last year, the chief of staff to the president revealed the president's foreign policy mindset when he was quoted to have said that President Buhari's foreign policy mindset is to first focus on Nigeria, then its immediate neighbors before paying attention to, you know, West Africa, then Africa and the rest of the world. And we saw that in, for instance, the first countries he visited after he was sworn in. Uh, where neighboring countries he shut down the borders for over a year to tackle smuggling. You learned about the railway he built from Nigeria to Niger and donating cars of over a billion era to that effect. I'd like you to just quickly speak on what you think has really been the impact of this Africa being, you know, the centerpiece of our foreign policy. And is it time really to review that policy? Well, uh, I mean, you see, uh, it cannot be otherwise in the sense that um, our postures in terms of our continental and uh, sort of regional interest, the role that we played in the formation of Equus and the leadership role that we have played in the past, it, it cannot be otherwise. All those postures that President Buhari did in terms of the reviewing, I mean, there have been quite a lot of efforts uh, to review our foreign policy uh, the cool process and quite a lot of other things. Cool. You see, foreign policy is not static. It's a dynamic thing. Uh. And that was why you, in, various, in terms of our ministers that have come, there have been certain foreign policy trusts like we had in the, thing, in the times of uh, President Bola Giyakinyemi maintaining some activists, activist foreign policy or Ikewa Chuku Ikewai Chupu coming out with a triple of economic diplomacy yeah. and uh, Yuma Dweke having a sort of, uh, uh, you, know, you know, Nigerian centralism, making sure that Nigeria comes forth. You see, you have this trust depending, of course, on the head of state and the foreign minister. Uh, but the central, the main thing is that Africa still remains our foreign policy, uh, foreign policy. Program. I agree with you, Ambassador, that Nigeria has to come first because um, if we don't settle things back at home, there's absolutely nothing to sell to the world. But I'd like to, you know, yeah, take please. you through a list of things because of our time. I, I, I'd like us to touch on quite a number of other things because lately we learned about Egypt's reluctance to give access to, you know, Nigerians fleeing the war in Sudan. Um, last year there was also the story of Nigerians fleeing the war in Ukraine. Uh, being turned back from the Polish border. Uh, not to talk about xenophobia in South Africa, and the list is endless. What does this say, really, about the estimation of Nigeria outside and our strategy of dealing with other nations? Well, you see, you know, I've said it that, uh, you know, the, the foreign policy, the stand of the country rests on the tripods, the geopolitical interests, the economic circumstances, and, of course, the military. Um, well, you know that our country, you know, has been, uh, you know, uh, constrained by quite a lot of factors. The insecurity that was pervasive, the, um, the economic situation, and of course, you know, um, our, our postures. But given that circumstances, given that circumstances, there have been quite a sort of way, what we could call a law, that that leadership qualities that we, the leadership role that we always play, um, the, 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 the posture that we have always present was affected by this. And you know, when President Wari came, 
the so you, domestic domestic situation is very important. It's primordial. What are those things that he, he intends to, to pursue anti corruption stance to address the insecurity that was pervasive and also to address the economic situation? You can say that as far as uh, the issue of security is concerned, well, it's a sort of modest, modest progress have been made, but of course, it does affect the capacity to be able to be on the international front. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these are some of the things that, um, you know, does affect our stance. And there are many people are saying, what has happened to Nigeria? Why are we not playing that, you know, that, that, that leadership role that we used to play? There was a time in this country when the poster was, oh, Nigeria has the money, a lot of money, but the problem is, you know, that they have to spend it, you know. So, but things have changed. But having said that, we need a rejig. Uh. There's need for a rejig of our foreign policy to be able to play that role that, you know, that we are supposed to be. The leadership of Nigeria is not in doubt in terms of our poster, in terms of our uh, our geopolitical significance, the role that we, we play in the United Nations, and it's, again, also it all depends on the leadership. One of the greatest problems of our country now is interagency discord. Uh. Is, you know, the centrality of pursuing foreign policy rests with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And of course, the, 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 the leadership. But what we now see in terms of uh, what is happening is that depending, of course, on the, on the, on the, on the national interest, yeah. is that uh, there, are quite, there are multiple voices, mm. multiple voices that are at times discordant. But we, one of the things that we must address is to bring back the centrality of pursuit of foreign policy in the hands of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Talking about the Ministry, Ambassador, because that's, as where, a that's career, where... As a career, as a career yes. person, as a career yeah. ambassador, I, I mean, I, I, know, I, I, know, I know what the Ministry has done over the years and continues to do. Exactly my and point. Then, exactly my yeah. point. Because that's where you started from in 1972. Uh, you worked in various departments, even as a director. Uh, but uh, I'd like you to speak specifically to what you make of the choice of who the minister for foreign affairs should be in the new dispensation what should the incoming president be looking for well i i, I mean if you look at the trajectory of foreign ministers we have had uh, from the time of okoya ripu yogarba uh uh, Ibrahim Gambari, uh, uh, Lua Deniji, and everyone has come with their own mien and postures. So I, I, I think, you know, what is, what is important is the, the, the president, or the, and I'm sure that uh, with the president elects the caliber of uh, a technical, somebody who knows the value of technocrats. I'm talking about the, our president-elect, mm. who has been tested, who know how to identify talents. I, I don't think he will have any problem in identifying who the foreign minister will be. Mm. But whatever it is, whatever it is, one of the things we need to address, of course, is the centrality of the seat of the pursuit of foreign policy, which is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. All the other agencies must work in tandem, must work through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You talked about Egypt. Egypt, a part of the, of the Arab police tendencies, Egypt also has its own, its own security interests. Egypt has its own security interests that is pursued in terms of the neighbors, in terms of the Arab Israeli war, and others. But immediately, Head of state intervened, intervened, which is also a recourse to pan-Africanism. Uh. Uh, we have no, we have very 
positive, very cordial relations with Egypt. But when we at various uh, agencies of government were dealing with the Egyptian authorities or the evacuation of the, of the Nigerians from Sudan, what do you expect? They know that there is the embassy. The embassy is there in, in Cairo. And just like the embassy is there in, uh, in Khartoum and the role that the foreign ministry played. But you have agencies that don't have funds. You have a ministry that has the funds. You have the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that has all the wherewithal for funds to be sent and funds was not sent. So, oh. you know, if, if within all the, these are all these issues that interagency coordination needs to be addressed in our country. There are two multiple diverse voices. I agree. And we must bring it back to the centrality mm. of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to prosecute uh, along the lines. Of course, there will be other, there are research institutes, there is the NIA, there, is, uh, there are various uh, uh, departments in the universities. Uh, our think tank, our resource endowment is not in doubt. But well, what needs to be done is to, is, is to, is to do what is right in mm. terms of the best practices. Absolutely. And I believe that is what we do. There's a lot to talk about. Perhaps uh, in the coming days, we'll bring you back to discuss Nigeria's global image and how our foreign policy can respond in that regard, uh, particularly with the sentencing of the Kuramadus, you know, and all of that. But that's our time for now. I want to say a big thank you, Ambassador Lucia Guakinsoya. Former Nigerian ambassador to Ethiopia with concurrent accreditation to the Republic of Djibouti. You, you are a permanent second representative to the African Union and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and currently Chairman Association of Retired Career Ambassadors of Nigeria, a Lagos branch. Thank you for joining us on the program, and it's good to see you again. Well, thank you, Nifemi, and thank you for all that we are doing. I'm happy that uh, the strengths that we are taking. In your new establishment, the TBC. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much for the Thank kind words.